The story of what happened on the day that Jesus died is profoundly moving and can invoke feelings of gratitude often too deep for words. Tonight we will hear again of Christ's passion for us, a love so true it would require the ultimate sacrifice. He had no choice, for to compromise and avoid the suffering would compromise the message of God's expansive love. As a part of our worship this evening, we will offer our brokenness up to God. Fears, guilt, anxiety, grief, by releasing these things that weigh us down, we open ourselves to receive the new life of Easter morning. Many of you delivered gray cards to the church and dropped them in a large brass burning bowl, and we'll touch fire to those expressions of brokenness, and as the smoke tendril curls upward, it carries with it those things that bind us and burden us. God receives our burdens as prayers for healing, and through the love of Christ will make us new. It's the promise of the gospel. If you are carrying burdens which are not represented in this burning bowl tonight, feel free to write them down on a small piece of paper now. And when we light the burning bowl in our service, tear your paper into tiny pieces. And at the end of our service, take your torn pieces outside to scatter in the night or burn them yourself in a safe outdoor space. Hear the story of this Good Friday. And remember, we can do nothing to pay for God's love yet we owe everything in response to the ultimate gift. Listen to the message of God's love and be humbled by the magnitude of the passion of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
Please pray with me. O God, who will not let us walk alone, on this night of shadows, we remember the road Jesus walked. We remember his love for us, so deep, so strong, that he refused to turn from the way that would lead him to the cross. Tonight, we remember his path and pray you will strengthen us so we might dare to journey with him to witness his pain, to marvel at his love, and to admit our own betrayals of your love for us. We walk with all your children who don't deserve your love, but receive grace upon grace through the love of Christ. Now, encourage us to walk with Jesus through death to the promise of everlasting life. Amen.
Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus left the city and went, as he usually did, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples went with him. And when he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. Then he went off from them about the distance of a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Father, he said, if you will, take this cup of suffering away from me. Not my will, however, but your will be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. In great anguish, he prayed even more fervently. His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Rising from his prayer, he went back to the disciples and found them asleep, worn out by their grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The Betrayal and Arrest of Jesus. Jesus was still speaking when a crowd arrived, led by Judas, one of the 12 disciples. He came up to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said, Judas, is it with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man? And when the disciples who were with Jesus saw what was going to happen, they asked, Shall we use our swords, Lord? And one of them struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, Enough of this. He touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come there to get him, Did you have to come with swords and clubs as though I were an outlaw? I was with you in the temple every day, and you did not try to arrest me. But this is your hour to act when the power of darkness rules. Peter denies Jesus. They arrested Jesus and took him away into the house of the high priest, and Peter followed at a distance. A fire had been lit in the center of the courtyard, and Peter joined those who were sitting around it. When one of the servant women saw him sitting there at the fire, she looked straight at him and said, This man, too, was with Jesus. But Peter denied it. Woman, I don't even know him. After a little while, a man noticed Peter and said, You are one of them, too. But Peter answered, man, I am not. And about an hour later, another man insisted strongly, there isn't any doubt that this man was with Jesus because he is also a Galilean. But Peter answered, man, I don't know what you're talking about. At once, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. And the Lord turned around and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered that the Lord had said to him, Before the rooster crows tonight, you will say three times that you do not know me. Peter went out and wept bitterly. Jesus before the council. The men who were guarding Jesus made fun of him and beat him. They blindfolded him and asked him, who hit you? Yes. And they said many other insulting things to him. And when the day came, the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law met together, and Jesus was brought before the council. Tell us, they said, are you the Messiah? And he answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you a question, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right side of Almighty God. And they all said, Are you then the Son of God? And he answered them, You say that I am. And they said, We don't need any witnesses. We ourselves have heard what he said. Jesus before Pilate and Herod. The whole group rose up and took Jesus before Pilate, where they began to accuse him. 
We caught this man misleading our people and telling them not to pay taxes to the emperor and claiming that he himself is the Messiah, a king. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? So you say, answered Jesus. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no reason to condemn this man. But they insisted even more strongly with his teaching, he's starting a riot among the people all through Judea. He began in Galilee, and now he has come here. When Pilate heard this, he asked, is this man a Galilean? And when he learned that Jesus was from the region ruled by Herod, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. And Herod was very pleased when he saw Jesus because he had heard about him and had been wanting to see him for a long time. He was hoping to see Jesus perform some miracle. So Herod asked Jesus many questions, but Jesus made no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law stepped forward and made strong accusations against Jesus. Herod and his soldiers made fun of Jesus and treated him with contempt. Then they put a fine robe on him and they sent him back to Pilate. On that very day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Jesus is sentenced to death. Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and he said to them, you brought this man to me and said that he was misleading the people, and now I have examined him here in your presence, and I have not found him guilty of any of the crimes you accuse him of, nor did Herod find him guilty, for he sent him back to us. There is nothing this man has done to deserve death, so I will have him whipped and let him go. The whole crowd cried out, kill him, set Barabbas free for us. Barabbas had been put in prison for a riot that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate wanted to set Jesus free, so he appealed to the crowd again, but they shouted back, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate said to them the third time, but what crime has he committed? I cannot find anything he's done to deserve death. I will have him whipped and set him free. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices that Jesus should be crucified, and finally their shouting succeeded. So Pilate passed the sentence on Jesus that they were asking for. He set free the man they wanted, the one who'd been put in prison for riot and murder, and he handed Jesus over for them to do as they wished. the crucifixion of Jesus. The soldiers led Jesus away, and as they were going, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, who was coming into the city from the country. They seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed him, and among them were some women who were weeping and wailing for him. And Jesus turned to them and said, women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me, but for yourselves, and your children, for the days are coming when people will say, how lucky are the women who never had children, who never bore babies, and who never nursed them. That will be the time when people will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, hide us. For if such things as these are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both of them criminals, were also led out to be put to death with Jesus. And when they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there and the two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. They divided his clothes among themselves by throwing dice. The people stood there watching while the Jewish leaders made fun of him. He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah whom God has chosen. The soldiers also made fun of him. They came up to him and offered him cheap wine and said, save yourself if, if you are the king of the Jews. And above him were written these words, this is the king 
of the Jews. The death of Jesus. One of the criminals hanging there hurled insult at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right, because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. And Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. It was about 12 o'clock when the sun stopped shining and darkness covered the whole country until three o'clock and the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two and Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, in your hands I place my spirit. He said this and died. the burial of Jesus. The army officer saw what happened and he praised God saying, certainly he was a good man. And when the people who had gathered there to watch the spectacle saw what happened, they all went back home beating their breasts in sorrow. And all those who knew Jesus personally, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance to watch. There was a man named Joseph from Arimathea, a town in Judea. He was a good and honorable man who was waiting for the coming of the kingdom of God. And although he was a member of the council, he had not agreed with their decision and action. And he went into the presence of Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took the body down and wrapped it in a linen sheet and placed it in a tomb which had been dug out of solid rock and which had never been used. It was Friday, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who followed Jesus from Galilee went with Joseph and saw the tomb and how Jesus' body was placed in it. And then they went back home and prepared the spices and perfumes for the body. And on the Sabbath day, they rested as the law commanded. In this time, we release what we don't want in our lives any longer. We release the things that hold us back, keep us from being who God is calling us to be. We release our pains, insecurities, fears, and anxieties. We release our sorrows and guilt, all that binds us or burdens us. We let these things go and let God take what is broken in us. We open our hearts to love and prepare to receive the new life offered to us through resurrection. Let us pray. Holy God, as we release our brokenness and burdens, receive these things through the tendrils of gray smoke. We release these things to you that they may no longer hold sway over us. Redeem our brokenness and make us ready to claim the new life you are creating in us, the new things you have for us in the resurrected one. Hear our prayers, holy God. Amen. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus is there, Jesus is grace, Jesus is with you. In this unexpected place,